everyone, it's Orange. Welcome to another month of TOA Hard. Before you guys leave, I have a farmable team for this level. Yes, you heard me right, a farmable team in the description down below. It's not by me, it's by another YouTuber. Also, I have another team without Shasun or Briand that I've beaten this floor with. I used Bella and Spectra instead of Shasun and Briand, but Warning, that team does require some RNG and it's a lot more difficult to beat this boss than with this team, but it is possible. So that's out there for you guys too. So I've been waiting two months to show you guys this team. I had some awesome viewers comment on my previous video telling me about this team. I just didn't know about it at all. So I kind of, or they told me that this team was a lot easier and more reliable than the team I was using, so I was really pumped to wait for Athtaros to come around again because, you know, we have to do Lyrith, then Athtaros finally. So here it is. This team was indeed what they said. I don't remember if it was one viewer or more than one viewer. I will um, give them credit where credit is due, so I should be showing them on the screen or something like that. Um, they were super awesome for telling me that because I honestly would probably be using the same team unless they told me last month to clear this floor, the unreliable team, and it would have just been heartache and pain and wasted time and wasted energy. But thanks to them, I have a new video for you guys, a new team showcase, and my life is a lot easier. So here's that team. Let's go ahead and talk about the strategy here. So the first wave is a little bit annoying. The second wave is a lot easier compared to this one, just because of the annoying um, unrecoverable buff, the anti-crit buff, or debuff I mean, the unrecoverable debuff, the anti-crit buff, because your Verd needs to be critting, the shield, it's just kind of annoying, but um, not really that hard. It doesn't require too much RNG. On the clear or on the attempt before this, I decided to try one attempt where I focused the Sylphids first because they have a bunch of annoying things, like I just mentioned. And I actually wiped. I would not suggest going for the Sylphids. I think it's more important to go for the Succubuses first. You'll see me here focusing down the Succubuses. I'm spreading out my slow to pretty much everything that I can. It helps a lot to slow everything. So I'm just, uh, <clears throat> I'm using my Hua's first attack here to get slows out, and I'm hitting anything without the anti-crit buff on it. Jasoon died, but it's totally fine because I'll res, here, res her here soon. I kind of forgot to. I could have resed her like a turn earlier, but I was like, oh, whoops, uh, I forgot. So I'll res her here soon. And that's pretty much the first wave. I think I covered everything, spread out the slow, spread out those despair stuns, try to go for those despair stuns with Brienne and Beretta if possible whenever you can, and then I'm trying to also get butterflies on the sylphids because my Chisun might glance on the uh, fire chicks, so I'm trying to get those butterflies on the sylphids when possible. And that's the first wave, let's go ahead and skip on to the second. Here we are on the second. Like I said, I think it's a lot easier than the first just because you don't have to deal with all of those annoying things. What I'm doing here is pretty much the same thing. Spreading out my slow, I'm going for the Valkyrias first because they do have a defense break. That can be pretty deadly if they target your Briand. You never want that happening because he's your reser. You know, when he's gone, it's pretty much over. But, you know, if they kill Chisun, it's totally fine um, just because they're fire, you know. So I'm spreading out the slow to them, making sure they don't move. If possible, I'm getting butterflies flies on the Conrads. I'm going for despair stuns with my Beretta and Brienne, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. It felt really safe. I felt like they couldn't really kill me at all, and I'm going for more slows here on the Conrads just because I could. You know, why not? And that was pretty much that. Super safe. We'll go ahead and watch it here for a little bit longer just to uh, give you guys a good idea of what's going on. Um, none of them landed a defense break, and the Conrads really did no damage, so even if I was defense broken and the Conrad hit my Briand, I don't even know if he would die. Because you saw, like, a little while ago, one of those Conrads hit my Chasun, and it really did nothing to her. I think it's pretty important to spread out that slow, though. It just helps a lot because it helps you control them, and then you'll be getting dots out and stuns a lot more, so I think it's really important to do that. Okay, getting my butterfly on the Conrads because, like I said, you see a Mike glance on the fire chicks. And that's pretty much it. The wave was really safe, so let's go ahead and skip ahead to the boss. 
Here we are on the boss. My strategy here is to kill both crystals. I want to sufficiently dot them up before I let the right one move. Actually, just the right one. The left one puts an unrecoverable debuff on you, so it's really not that big of a deal. It can kind of mess some things up at certain points. You, you kind of have to be careful for it, but not really. It's not really that big of a deal. I'm making some mistakes that I'll go over here. So, I'm getting my slow on the boss and the right crystal as soon as possible because those are my the two most dangerous things. Uh, the right crystal fills up the boss's attack bar by like 75 or 80 percent. I don't quite know what it is, but it's not 100 percent, but it does fill up the boss's attack bar by a lot. I am going to want it to move though, so my goal here is to, I think I attempted to do that strategy. I have seen some other people do that strategy where they make sure the boss has very low attack bar and then they let the right crystal move so the boss gets a pretty full attack bar but it's not 100% and then they control the boss from there and push his attack bar back so the boss doesn't get a turn but I don't think my team is like fast enough to do that or something. I don't know. I have seen some other people do it. I was watching another YouTube video where someone was using Aria. I'll probably link that Aria one down below. I think they were using something very similar to this, but Aria instead of Briand. I can't remember. Um, no, maybe it was... I don't remember what it was, uh, but I'll link it down below for you guys if you're curious. I think they... Uh, I think in that video, the person who did it was really good about making sure the right crystal moved, but that the boss didn't. Like I said, it's really hard though because the right crystal gives the boss so much attack bar. It's, it's hard to move in between there. So I'm going to dot the right crystal up. Remember, enemies can only have 10 debuffs. I messed up there and I put the unrecoverable debuff on the right crystal, which was a mistake. I didn't really think too much when I did this. Um, so it was okay, but there could have been a dot there. Could have been a little bit more damage on the right crystal. The attack debuff and the slow is necessary. Like I said, you need to get that slow on the right crystal so you can control it along with the boss and make sure you dot it up enough before it gets a first turn. And then the uh, attack break, my Briand has to AoE to do that, so it's fine that uh, the attack breaks on it. But the undercoverable's not good. I Before I let the right crystal move, I made sure it was dotted up enough and I also tried to get my butterfly on the boss. So I just reset the crystal there to try to get my butterfly on the boss just to make sure, um, just to give anything to myself that I can to make sure that some of my monsters don't die. So my plan here, um, like I said, I tried that little fancy strategy where I let the right crystal move and fill up the boss's attack bar, but I tr and then I was hoping that I'd be able to push the boss back before he moved, but that didn't happen. I missed my, um, I missed my Beretta's turbulence. So from then on, I pretty much ignored that, and I was going to let the boss move. So what I wanted to happen was I wanted the right crystal to move, but only fill up the boss's attack bar by a little bit because if the right crystal fills up the boss's attack bar by a lot, that means that I probably just used my turbulence on the boss or something, and I probably wasted like a really big skill on the boss. So right here like is a really good example. Right there exactly, I tried to do that little fancy strategy that people do, but from here on I gave up because it didn't really work out as you can see. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> the next time I let the crystal move, which is the last time it will have to move because it's gonna move here and, and then the next move afterwards it's going to die. And on its death turn, it's not going to fill up the boss's attack bar. So really it only gets two turns and it's dead, but technically three turns. So, but on the third it doesn't do anything. Um, so, we have one more turn to go. Let's talk about the boss's AoE. So, I got super lucky and he did not AoE my team at all this run. And I was looking at other people's videos to see how much damage he actually does when he AoEs with attack with the attack debuff on him. And I was looking at someone else's video who didn't have defense buff. A lot of people were using the um, Basalt here, so they did have a defense buff, so it was kind of hard to tell. But the farmable video that I'm linking you guys down below, 
the team did not have a defense buff on it and he did 10 almost like 10 to 12k to everyone and then he also hit Mav for 25k. He crit Mav for 25k and he also crit Bernard for 14k on the same attack with that AoE. So that was kind of confusing. I don't think he should kill your monsters as long as you're bringing tanky enough ones. Um... I think you mostly will need everything to survive. Like I said, I really don't know about that attack um, debuff and how much damage he should do because with my team, if my um, if some of my monsters die, it can be really, really dangerous for me. But once that first turns over, I should be good because like I said, the crystal is only going to move twice. So if on the first turn, if my monsters survive, I think it'll be fine because I really need my Hua alive and I need my Vert alive to get that slow back on him. Um, if both die, it can be really, really dicey. I think um, I would be fine though if both died. I did rerune my Hua to speed HP attack. I don't know. I don't think she would have enough HP though with her current runes. Um, I think you I think you should be fine though if you have high HP monsters. My Beretta, Chasoon, and Brienne have a lot of HP. More than 30,000, I think, on all of them. If we factor in my towers and stuff. So for sure I think they would have lived. The boss also has a 15% crit rate. I think that's just flat. So that could kind of factor in and possibly kill you. Um, that would probably, you'd probably just get unlucky at that point. So if you are wiping, you may want to look at it, look at it a little bit closer. Maybe he did just get really lucky and crit you and that's why you lost. Um, so I should probably look up and see exactly how much damage he does with that attack debuff, but I don't really talk to anyone. I tried to ask my guild and, uh, let me see if they responded. I asked a couple people, um, no, I don't think they really know. I, I don't want to do this again, but maybe next time if he actually ends up AoEing me, I'll have a good example of it. But from the videos that I watched, I think I watched two videos, the farmable one and uh, the one with Arya because there wasn't a defense buff. He did get the AoE off and he didn't kill things. He got them kind of low, but didn't kill, so... I got lucky though, and then from here on, it's pretty much auto. I think I stepped away for a minute, and my team was like fucking up, like Beretta's using his Phoenix Fury and not resetting, and the boss got another turn. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead because the video is pretty long. I think we have like 10 more minutes. No, even longer than that, like 14 more minutes. Is that really for real? Oh god, why is the video going so fast? Did I speed this up? How did I speed this up? Okay, wait, why is this going faster? I didn't click anything. Okay, what the hell? Um, okay, that was really strange, but this is actually kind of cool. Okay, so that was weird. Okay, let's go ahead and skip ahead. Somewhere in here, yeah, so Verd died like a second ago. A while ago, actually. Okay, whatever, blah, 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 you know. He died, I fixed it, I got the slow on him, and then I think I helped the AI out a little bit. And then eventually, I just continue autoing, and then he finally dies a while later. My runes will be in the description. I think I've said that a couple times. Okay, come on now. Yay! So that was Aftaros on hard with a new team that I haven't shown you guys before. I'm sure my knowledge will get better over time. Like next month, I'll or in two months, I'll probably know everything about the whole attack uh, debuff. You know how much damage he does with his AOE situation because he just did not want to use it on me. So that was the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to ask questions down below. I'll do my best to help you. Reddit is my favorite place to also look up other stuff. I've seen a ton of people using Battle Mammoths, uh, Basalt on here, and a bunch of other teams. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you guys later. Oh, wait, hold on. Also, these summons will be in this Path of Decency. I'll probably do it uh, on Saturday or something. So in, in a couple days, the video will be out. Path of Decency episode, what is it, 43 or something? Hold on, I gotta get this, the proper episode number for you guys. And then I'm also probably going to make um, episode 43, yes. That's when all of these normal and hard summons will be. 
at the end of the episode. Also, I will probably make a video on my auto team because I was able to auto all except six floors on this rotation of TOA hard. So look out for that team too in case you have the monsters I do. Beretta, Arya, Vero, Brian, Chasun, and Mav, look out for that too. Um, check out my runes and everything because they did super well and my skill ups. I'll have those for you in that video. You can also check out the November rune video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Catch you guys later.